Yeah. My main concern, obviously, the medical training they received. So again, what did Mr. Chauvin know? What it was his training? What was his experience up to that date? All relevant. When we start getting into the opinions, how many use of force opinions do we have? It's cumulative, I think, possibly already. But I think uh, as you go through each of those, it's got to be talking about training that uh, the defendant received. Not just, here's trainings we had. Because if he didn't take the training, it doesn't go to his uh, intent or knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> understood, Your Honor. The, the, the workforce records specify what, you know, right. in-service training um, the defendant has attended. And then we have the curriculum, the materials that were presented, you know, during those training blocks. And crisis intervention training seems to be relevant to this case. Yeah. Use of force training is relevant to this case. Medical training is relevant to this case. So all those summaries of the training that the defendant received according to his records and what your, the curriculum is, that's, I think, all admissible. I think when we start getting into opinions about use of force, I think we should visit about that before we start blurting out opinions. We've already had several, and let's, I think we need to go and tread carefully because of whether they, whether their opinion is something that is the appropriate topic even for expert testimony because some of this stuff uh, is within the jury's knowledge and they should be able to do without an expert. So, but I think let's just kind of go with that and, and for now. Honor, if I may just, uh, as to the cumulative discussion, just to, right. to add to that, you know, I, you know, foreseeing, um, you know, Mr. Nelson being an able defense attorney, I would anticipate if I were to just simply try to prove my case with experts, he would say, you know, the state uh, hired some experts to say this was unreasonable, but what do the people who actually do the work say? Well, right? and, and I so, think we've gotten two of those already. And, so. and, and, and that's the reason. I'm just, uh, you know, I need to cover the appropriateness of the use of force really from, from every angle to give the full picture of the reasonable officer. I understand at some point uh, enough is enough. Well, let me, let, me, let me be a little more clear. I think you have the right to somebody who's actually done the defensive tactics, use of force training, whatever, to give their opinion about this case. But not everybody, not every trainer. You can take one who's done the training, knows the curriculum that, the, uh, that Mr. Chauvin actually participated in and say, and give an opinion there. But I think then, then we're done with the MPD people who can give an opinion regarding defensive tactics and use of force. So does that make a little more sense? It does, Your Honor. That that was, I think that was my plan. Okay, good. <laughs> Always good to have a plan that's consistent with the court's rulings. And and uh, it, and I guess the court will let me know if if you feel I'm I'm. Um, yeah, let's just go sidebar if we have to in the yes. midst of all this, because as we know, everything is fluid. So, all right, we'll get the jury. And the judge just called in the jury there in the case of Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer charged in the killing of George Floyd. The, the, the attorneys and the judge right now were just discussing, without the jury present, what uh, witnesses will be allowed to say. Law enforcement witnesses are expected to be called one after the other. And so the discussion was how many of those witnesses will be allowed to offer their opinion on use of force, uh, specifically on the use of force against George Floyd, given two law enforcement officers have already offered their opinion that they thought that it was unreasonable, as well as which training manuals and training materials will be allowed to be presented in court and will be allowed to be discussed. The judge there ruled that if they talk about a training, it has to be training that Derek Chauvin actually was was a part of, that it was training that Derek Chauvin actually received uh, if they're going to bring it up uh, in, in evidence against him, or it can be training material that's used to counter previous testimony from a previous uh, witness. Let's see what's happening in court now, if they've brought that jury in. Uh, yet or not. Uh, still waiting on the jury now. Kenneth Moten is live uh, outside the courthouse in Minneapolis. Um, 
And we also have uh, an attorney here standing by. Uh, Shauna, tell me a little bit about, uh, I know it was a little inside baseball, but you're a lawyer, you understand these things uh, certainly much better than I do. Why was this whole discussion between the judge and the attorney so important before they start the line of questioning to establish who's going to be able to offer their opinion, who's not going to, and what training actually comes to play uh, in this case. It seems one big point that they kept talking about was whether or not these use of force opinions become cumulative. Uh, what do they mean by that? So essentially, the defense is trying to limit how many people offer this idea that it was unreasonable force. And obviously, the defense wants to do that because they don't want the reiteration for the jury that it was unreasonable, unreasonable, unreasonable. And what they're trying to do is limit that to the people that should actually be able to render the opinion. They want to keep it very narrow. If someone is here to test about, testify about the training they received, they shouldn't be allowed to give a, a opinion on whether or not the force was reasonable, right? So the defense is looking to limit the scope of what these witnesses are able to talk about and what these experts are able to attest to. The state is making the argument that obviously if it only comes from an expert, that's not enough. We need everyone that's in that sort of sphere, from the training personnel to the people who actually implement and actually do the hands-on training, what their opinion is, so that way we can get a full body of work. And Kenneth, we understand before the cameras turned on and the audio turned on when we, when we heard that discussion between the attorneys and the judge, they had a private hearing. It was on the record, but it was not on camera. We did not have access to the audio. And that sounded like it was relevant to potential juror misconduct. And while we couldn't see it on the feed, the pool reporters were there and we are allowed to report on it. What have you learned about what happened in court this morning? Well, we learned that ultimately Judge Peter Cahill found there was no misconduct nice. by the jury. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.